What's going on, y'all? This message today, I want y'all to understand who Jesus is. You know, he ain't just no regular person. Jesus, his name holds so much power. Yeshua Hamashiach, name, his name alone holds so much power that you can't even imagine. If we can see into the spirit realm and see his glorified body, we can't even imagine. Man, look, John, when he turned around, he seen Jesus, he fell at his feet dead. Because he's, 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 he, he's seen how Jesus looked. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, you know, I want to talk to y'all about Jesus because a lot of y'all don't really know who Jesus is. You know, he changed so many people's lives. You can think of the worst possible person, the worst game banger, just, you know, the worst drug dealers, you know, the strippers, the, the, the you know, the, the prostitutes. Man, look. Jesus could change anybody. And I'm going to tell you straight like this, man. It's a story in the Bible, and it's in the book of Daniel. With Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I'm going to tell you how powerful that story is. Nebuchadnezzar, he told all three of them to bow down to the statue, to the golden statue, I think, that he made. And they were like, nah, we ain't about to do that because we worship God. He was like, you know what? If you don't bow down, I'm going to throw you in the furnace. They said, they said, so be it. That's what they said. They said, so be it. Man, look, you know how bold you got to be to get thrown in the furnace and say, so be it, because you're going to worship God. You know what that take? That take courageousness. That take boldness like a lion. That's, that's lion hearted for real. And I'm going to tell you just like this. I'm going to tell you how powerful it was. Because when they threw him in there, the flame was so hot, it said it hit one of the guards that threw him up in there. Not only that, I want you to listen to this right here. Nebuchadnezzar, he threw three people in there. He threw them in there. And he looked at his servant, he said, Then we throw three people in there? And he said, One of them looked like the Son of Man. He looked at his servant, he said, Then we throw three people in there? And he looked, he said, That one looked like the Son of Man. It's the fourth one in there. And I'm going to tell you like this. In the Old Testament, Jesus didn't even come yet. But I'm going to tell you how powerful he is. When he appeared in that furnace with all three of them, Nebuchadnezzar didn't even know that was Jesus. But he just said that was the Son of Man because the, the, just the, the glory that, that he must have seen, it can only be the Son of Man. That's the only thing he could think of what it looked like. He said it won't look like the Son of Man in there, the four people in there. After he done threw three people in there, one of them came in there, saved them all. And I'm going to tell you, I'm, and see, with this message, I want you to be encouraged by this. I'm going to tell you why. If y'all understood who Jesus was, if y'all was able to understand what he can do for you, if y'all was able to understand, if y'all was able to just understand, if y'all was just able to fathom how much he could change your life, you wouldn't have nothing but love for him. I, man, I'm telling you, I done seen game makers. Jesus come in and change everything about him. They change their whole life around. They turn their whole life around. Jesus could, because I'm going to tell you this. When Jesus touched somebody, they're going to get touched and they're going to feel it. I'm going to tell you straight like that. When Jesus touched somebody, they're going to feel it. It ain't going to be like just, oh, no. When he touched somebody, he's going to touch somebody. And their life going to get impacted and they're going to change their ways. That's how powerful he is. Because y'all don't understand, he the king of glory. He the lion of Judah. He the sin this land, but he also the Lion of Judah. And when he come back, bro, it's going to be a whole different ball game. He the Prince of Peace. Man, there's so many people out here that's searching for peace. Jesus will come in, just hit him with that peace, just smack him in the face with that peace. He'll change everything about him. Because I'm trying to get y'all to see. I'm Man, look, when you're going through life, and you're going through trials, tribulation, heartbreak, headache, just, you know, arguments with the family and all that. You know who always going to be there for you? Jesus. Especially when you accept him as your Lord and Savior. He going to show you everything you need to do. He going to help you with every situation that you in. He going to show you everything that you got to do in order to get out the situation that you might have put yourself in after he just told you not to do it. But you still went ahead and did it anyway. That's how merciful he is. We serve a merciful God. Jesus, his name alone. Oh, so much power. The demons tremble at his name. I'm going to tell you how much power he got. All he said was one word to the demons. The demons, they seen him. All these, man, look. 
This is all he said. This is all he said right here. When the demons was in the dude, when the, I think it was in the book of Matthew, when the demons was in the dude, and they said, oh, he the son of man, oh, this Jesus. They was like, you know, don't cast us down into the pits here. They was like, you know, let us run into the swine. All he said, he said one word. One word in red. He said, go. They took, they went out there, folk body and ran into the swine right there. Because, man, look, I'm going to tell you straight like this. When you going through that fire, when you going through that storm, when you going through that fire, that fire is a testing of your faith. And once you come out of that fire, your faith is going to be even stronger than it was before. So next time you go through it, it ain't going to be nothing to you because you already got through it the first time because you got the line of Judah behind you. Same when you going through a storm, through the midst of the storm, if you keep your focus on Jesus the whole time, you ain't going to have no worries. The Bible says, don't be anxious about nothing. It says, Joshua 1, 9, fear not, this is my command. For the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Jesus is with you wherever you go. Because when you're going through a battle, you know who you got behind you. You got that line behind you. And you got God Almighty behind you as well. So what should that tell you? You know what that should tell you? Don't have no fear. Don't fear the devil. The devil can't do nothing to you unless God allow it. You know what I'm saying? Same with Job. The devil told God, he was like, let me test Job. Let's see what he do. God was like, all right. Job remained faithful. So when we go through things in life, God may allow it because... It's a building of our faith, even though we may not like it, even though we may want to just end it all, even may, even though we may just want to just be like, man, like, why is God doing it? He allowing certain stuff for a reason to happen. Because if everything was all lollipops and sugar canes, we wouldn't have no character development to get made. We wouldn't be able to help everybody with our experiences that we went through. We wouldn't be able to help everybody with, you know, the traumatic events or, you know, the, the, the testimonies that we go through in life. Because our testimonies, it can help people. Because I realize my testimony that I do, I help people a lot. De you know, I got a decent amount of people that, you know, grew up in the street. They come to me, they see my videos because it touch them. Because Jesus working through me. I don't take credit for nothing I do. You know why? Because I can't do it on my own. Jesus the one to do it for me. He the one to use me to speak to y'all through these videos that I make. Because I love him so much. Because he my Messiah, he my Lord, he my Savior, he my God in heaven. I serve the Lord that's sitting on the right throne of the Father in heaven. I serve the great God Almighty. Jesus, man, look. Jesus loved us so much, he died on the cross. He got beat. He got stabbed. They said he beat him. They said they beat him so bad that his face was disfigured. They spit on him, they yanked his beard out. And you know what? I can't I can't do nothing but try to die to my flesh. I can't do nothing but turn from my old ways because he died on the cross for me. He died on the cross for me. He shed his precious blood on that cross of Calvary for me. That's why I try to do my best to live for him. Yes, I may mess up a lot. Yes, I may backslide. Yes, I sin every single day. But the thing is, if I acted like I didn't go through anything, if I acted like I was always perfect, how would I be able to help somebody? That's me acting like a Pharisee. That's me acting like, you know, religious people. Because religious people, you know, they, they just, you know, there's certain people out here, they just act like they don't struggle with nothing. And they want to act like they, you know, so self-righteous and righteous and like, you know, they don't need no help or nothing like that. I need Jesus every second of my life. I don't care if everything going good. I need Jesus every second of my life. I need him every second of the day because the moment he leave, I know that's when everything going to crumble just like that. Everything I got, God can take it away just like that. That's why I stay as humble as I possibly can. I need Jesus even when everything going good. Yes, when stuff going bad, I'm going to pray hard. But what I'm going to try to do, but what I try to do, even when everything going good, I try to pray hard like that too because I want him to see even when everything going good, I still need him every single day. As bad as if I was in a bad situation because once we start to get comfortable and stuff like that. And see, even me, I've been getting comfortable sometimes, but I got to come up out of that. Because once you start getting comfortable, you know, like King David did, you know, that's when everything started, you know, he, he started getting comfortable thinking he can do whatever he want to do. I ain't trying to get in that type of situation, you know. And the thing about Jesus, you know, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Because you got to think, all these people, like I said, all these people, they looking for something. It's people in this world that's been so mad. I, I, I used to be one of the people. It's people in this world that's so angry. People looking for peace. I used to be one of the people that was so angry. And I still get angry sometimes, but I used to be one of the people that just get so angry. I used to be, you know, I just used to just punch stuff and cuss people out and just go off on people. But... The thing is, 
you know, when Jesus come in your life, he changed everything about you. Because like I said, he the prince of peace. Because when he come inside somebody, he will give them the peace that they need. Because people been fighting addiction, they been fighting stuff for years. But Jesus, Jesus can change everything about somebody. I know that for a fact. Because I seen it firsthand with my own eyes. I'm a living testimony of that. My friends live in testimony in it. People I know live in testimony in it. People I know live in testimony in it. People that been in jail for years and came out, Jesus saved them. Because they said, well, I had an encounter with Jesus while I was in jail. Because that's what he do. Who is Jesus? Jesus is somebody that died for you on the cross so you can live for him. To be able to get to go to heaven. I, I, try, I, try, I, try, I try hard. Sometimes I feel like I ain't doing enough. Because I know in the Bible it says, faith without works is dead. By me making these videos, that's an example of work. By making a simple testimony, that's an example of work because you basically telling your testimony. Somebody going to be able to relate and once they see a video, they'll be like, you know what? I feel like I'm not alone now. Because a lot of people, they feel like they're alone because they ain't never had nobody in the first place. But you know who never left them in the first place? Jesus. Jesus ain't never left us. God ain't never left us. Because Jesus existed before he was even formed in the womb. Because it's saying the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word became flesh. You feel me? Jesus. It's all about Jesus. That's, that's literally what it's about. Anybody, you know, I know a lot of people, they go through depression and, and suicide. And they just don't know what to do no more. And Jesus saved them. There's so many testimonies. You can, all you got to do is go on YouTube, look, at, look up testimonies. All you got to do is go on YouTube, look up testimonies of how people... They just want to commit suicide, and Jesus went and just changed everything about them. People say, well, I had an encounter with Jesus. He going to Muslims' dreams. He going in, you know, Buddhist dreams. Or he going to Muslim dreams. He going to other people's dreams. It's a different religion because they just don't know the truth in Jesus. He'll go and tell their dream and tell them I'm the truth. I'm the way. I'm the light. Don't nobody get through the Father except through me. That's what he'll do because he is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is my Lord. He is my God. He the one who I serve. I want to go to heaven. And the thing is, with these videos that I do, all I try to do is help out as many people as I possibly can. I know I tell people, you know, message me on Instagram. It's a lot of people that message me, so I be trying to get to them. And, I, you know, I do a better job of that. But the thing is, it's like this. Once you realize what Jesus did for you, once you read your Bible, once you pray hard, once you just start to just get encounters with him, everything about you will change. Every single thing about you will change. I got friends I used to talk to. Them folks don't even talk to me no more because they think I'm crazy. They say, oh, you, you don't even know what you're talking about. You just addicted to the Bible. You just, you know, following all these rules. You real strict on yourself. Man, look, the reason I'm strict on myself because in the Bible, Jesus himself, he said, it's easier for a camel to pass through an avenue than for a rich man to enter into heaven. Heaven is a narrow way. Hell is a broad path. So if I'm not strict on myself, how do I expect to get into heaven? If I'm just doing whatever I want, lotty dotty, and you know what I'm saying, not taking it serious. I take Jesus serious. Because the fact that he rose from there, he proved everything he taught was true. That's what he did. So it's like I said, if somebody died for me on the cross, so that I could go to heaven and live with him forever, and I could have a mansion, the streets filled with gold, and I could get the crown of life in my head, and I could get rewards in heaven, why wouldn't I want to live here? All this stuff on this earth is temporary. So why would not I want something in heaven? Jesus can give you that. Jesus can give you that peace that you need. Jesus can give you everything that you need. Jesus can fill you up. He say, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus is the living water. He is the word. He is the food that we need. Man, look. I'm going to tell you like this, man. You believe in Jesus. You trust in Jesus. He'll change everything about you. I'm so confident in my faith. I'm so confident. If I die, if I was to die, and say, for example, you got people in all these different religions. You got Islams. You know, you got Muslims, Buddhists. You know, all these different religions. I'm so confident to take this to the grave with me because Jesus... I'm so confident to take this to the grave with me because Jesus was the only person in history that rose from the dead. Nobody else in history did that. So if I want life after death, I'm going to follow the only person in history that rose from the dead.
Plus, on top of that, he the most written about person in history. Plus, they found the tomb of Jesus. And my and I was talking to somebody yesterday. They said they found DNA chromosomes or something like that. So, man, the message is this. Trust in Jesus. You need to accept him. It's not that you should. I think you should. You need to. Because time is cutting short. And he wants to save you. That's what he's doing. He rising up the younger generation right now. Telling you. You need to accept Jesus. It's not I think you should. Or I, it's not a lot. You probably should know. It's a you need to. Because he can change everything about your life. If you just trust him. If you just let him in. All you got to do is let him in. They say he who let me in. Me and my father will come in and sup with him. He knocking. Are you going to let him in?